This call conference will now be recorded. Could you please call the roll. Councilor Heldenbrand. Present. Councilor Arnold. Present. Councilor Oropesa. Here. Councilor Korn. Is absent. Absent. Yes, sir. I will not comment on that word absent about Councilor Korn. He's not in attendance. No. <laughs> okay. Let's have an approval of the agenda, if you don't mind, Councilor Farrell. I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda to include Bobby Kuhn of the Alien Motor Speedway. Just like the presentation. We're at, Here. I mean, we're, we're in the yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm a, a, okay. I don't know to add them. Okay, that's I'll just a good put point. It okay. Is that all right? We make it yeah. item number move. eleven. Ma'am, it's Alien Dragon, not. Oh, my bad. Okay, I was. <laughs> yeah. We'll make item 10, move it to item Alien 11. Alien Dragway. Move it to item 10, Alien Dragway, item 10. Okay, so let me, let me try that again. Item 10. All right. Make, um, I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda to include Bobby Kuhn of the Alien Dragway and move it to item number 10. Yeah, and move item number 10 to item number 11. Move item number 10 to item number 11. Yeah. Okay. No. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed, same. There being no opposition. Minutes are approved. First item on the agenda. Agenda. Hmm? The agenda is approved. Yeah, the agenda is approved. Yeah, we have to approve the minutes next. I, mean, I said the men now we've got to do the minutes. I'm sorry. I want to get on with this. We're all together. <laughs> Team effort. So, thank you, Juan. So now the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the legal committee on Thursday, July 28, 2022. I move that we approve the uh, minutes of Thursday, July 28, 2022 as presented. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same, being none, minutes shall be approved. Now we can move on to item one, regular item. RAC lease agreement, uh, consider recommending to full council the uh, lease with Charles Murphy. Jenna, please. Uh, this is to consider recommending a lease for Charles Murphy to enter into a new lease for building number 255. This is a building that lies outside of the AOA area. Um, I've started to try to add a little bit more uh, photographic exhibits so you can understand the location and also the condition of the building. Uh, this gentleman's been with us for quite some time. He last year was paying $1.94 a square foot. Um, we've moved him up to $2.25 a square foot uh, to add him into the same comparative lease rate as our Class C buildings. Um, that are on the higher end of Class C, and um, it will be for one year. His new rate will be 3,024 annually in 12 monthly installments of two. Okay. Questions? We have a motion for. Moving this. Make a motion. To consider recommending approval to offer consent. consent. Okay, I'm sorry. Please I'll make a motion to add to consent and the following RAC lease agreement with Charles Murphy. Okay. I have a motion Second. to place this on the consent agenda for next council meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. There being no opposed, motion so passes to put on the consent agenda. Item B of one, approval to authorize SC EYE lease for building 1670 and parcel land. Jenna, please. Perfect. Um, this is to uh, consider recommending approval to authorize Sky Inc. to enter into a lease for building 1670 and a parcel of land. Uh, they are the um, Hats Manufacture, or Research and Development is where they are now. Uh, they have built their hangar on a parcel of land. They were paying seven cents a square foot, and we have bumped them up to 10 cents a square foot. And they have building 1670. 
They were paying 25 cents a square foot in their last lease with an abatement um, from their original $5.25 a square feet. They did several improvements to the building. Um, so for their first five years, they had a lower lease uh, so they were only paying $100 a month. They've agreed to stay at the $5.25 a square foot um, going into an, an annual now with $25,968 and a monthly rate of $2,164. Well, that's a nice increase. It's a nice increase, uh, uh, but it's kind of evened itself out. Yeah. With itself. Just for information purposes, a hanger. Do they own that or is that permanently attached and we own that thing after they've done the improvements on that hangar? Uh, the, the, not the building, but the hangar um, on their land lease, as it goes out, it becomes our property or we ask them to remove it. That's typically how all of our boilerplate works, so it would be out of the ordinary for it to be not that. Exactly. That's our typical yeah. Okay. Okay. Any questions? I like that you got the lease right up, so that's nice. So do we have a motion? I'm going to make the motion. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, recommend to full council approval to authorize Sky to enter into a lease agree agreement for building 1670 and a parcel of land. And the tenant agrees to pay to landlord and strength the, usual, the annual sum of 25000 Seventy-one seventy-five payable in twelve monthly installments of two thousand one hundred sixty-four point thirty-one for building number sixteen seventy at five twenty-five per square foot, and then it also agrees to pay seven thousand five hundred and twelve monthly installments of six hundred and twenty-five for the par uh, parcel of land at uh, point ten or ten cents per square foot on consent. You want to put it on a consent or no? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Yeah. Last for a suggestion. Whatever you want. You may get pulls. Don't, don't, have, don't have no problem. No, second. You have a second? I second. Okay. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same. There being no opposition, motion so passes. Item number two, which is an RFP 23-003 for the sale of a building 316 North Richardson. Uh, please. Okay. Good afternoon, chairs, counselors. Um, we're looking to consider approval of scope of work for RFP 23-003 for the sale of 316 North Richardson for the city of Roswell. The city of Roswell is seeking uh, all the proposals for the investing of the property known as the Old Business Notions Building that is considered surplus and has no value to be utilized for economic development or other important goals identified by the city. The downtown area request is the Living Committee to approve the scope of work for the RFP and to go to full council on September 8th. If the RFP is approved, it will close on September 18th and proposals will be reviewed on November 15th. I do have a question. If, if, this, uh, if this property was donated for the benefit of the library, mm -hmm. and, and I, I'm assuming the library has said they don't need the, the property. Correct. Is the person that donated the property okay that the city accepted or the yes, the, the person that donated the property to the city has passed away. Um, so it's he donated it to the library. So the city has it. The city's going to sell it. And from what I understand, money is going to be returned to the library for the sale of that building. The library's funds, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that's, yes. that's, how we've, that's how we've been doing that. Yeah, I know we had a piece of property earlier that the same thing. Funds went to the library. Mark. Davidson, yes, sir. Do we need to have this motion to include that, that these funds will be? Um, or will the RFP? I mean, well, you can. How will that get? Right now, we're just approving scope of work. So that's all we're doing. Yeah. So, you know, when you, when it comes time to approve a sale, you want to do that as part of the motion? Okay. No problem. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mr. Chair, I, I was going to correct one thing that I had overheard. This building came from the Library Foundation. 
and was provided to the city in order to sell the property or and then the money would be deposited to the library. Okay. This wasn't actually acquired by the, uh, like the house as well too. This one actually came from the library foundation and they turned it over to the city for this purpose. Okay. okay. So, so that we would pay the property taxes. <laughs> well, luckily they were a nonprofit as well. So, okay. <laughs> so we, want, we do want to put this building back out and get it uh, usable for, for commercial use if we can. So, but that, that's what happened. Any further questions? Is that for me? You want to carry a motion there? Oh, yeah, I'll please. make. I'd like to make a motion to consider recommending approval of a biennial. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, Consider approving, I'm moving us ahead. Consider approving a scope of work for RFP 23-003, sale of 316 <coughs> Richardson by the Community Development Department. Full <coughs> consent, um, full council of consent. Um, consent as well. Okay. Yeah. To the consent agenda for approval. And second. I have a motion and a second. All those favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same. There being no opposition, motion so passes to place that item on the consent agenda at next council meeting. Item number three, which is even Mexico, Main Street, a biennial MOU. Mr. Mavers, please. <laughs> I'm here since we have a number of guests in the room. Um, that are that have <laughs> say a serious interest in what's going on, and I've also been told I need to keep it short. So <laughs> this month and next month, you'll have items related directly related to uh, Main Street Roswell coming before you. We're starting off this month with the biannual memorandum of understanding. This is a three-party agreement between New Mexico Main Street, between Main Street Roswell, and between the city. One of the reasons I wanted to spend a little bit of time going over this is because since during my tenure here, there's been a lot of misinformation and a lot of rumor and a lot of other things about miscommunication, about things not moving forward. And I wanted to go ahead and lay the groundwork for a really good forward movement between the city and Main Street Roswell. And I want to let you all know, I believe, is there any way, I'm not sure how to check it, uh, Daniel Gutierrez of Main Street, New Mexico is online, I believe. He was supposed to be here. Can you expand the, uh, here, give me the thing I can show you. Who's on? Let's see, he's there he is. I'm here. There he is. All right, there he is. Hi, Daniel. Thank you for making it. Appreciate it. But I asked Daniel to be here just in case there were any questions specifically for Main Street, New Mexico. We also have um, Barbara Gomez here. Barbara is our incoming executive director for Main Street Roswell. Main Street Roswell has been without an executive director for well over a year. Barbara was just hired and effectively her first day was August 1st. So we are making very quick progress now that Barbara's on board. I'm working directly with Barbara a tremendous amount and the working relationship is, I'm gonna categorize it as excellent. You categorize it how you want to, but I am really enjoying working with Barbara, okay? Uh, we have a new president. As everybody knows, when, uh, uh, when uh, Juliana Halverson uh, declared that she was going to run for city council, she stepped down as president of Main Street Roswell, that position has been vacant. We have a new uh, president for Main Street Roswell, and that's Santhia Wright. Okay, is, Santhia's not here today, but we have a couple other members of the board as well here, but you'll notice everybody's here with a smile on their face, okay? Nobody's here to hopefully yell and scream and, and, and throw mud in everybody's direction. So what I wanted to do again is ask if you consider recommending the city council the approval. This is a biennial MOU. It's required every two years. The Main Street New Mexico, uh, they come down with the MOU, they get everybody to sit down, we agree to it. So if you'll notice in your packet, you have the MOU already executed by Main Street New Mexico. I have a second set of signatures on the documents in my office that were delivered today. Main Street Roswell has already signed their portion of it. Web signatures, I've got three copies of it. At the end of item number four, you'll be asked to go ahead and approve 
a uh, resolution that will like authorize either the city, either the mayor, the city manager, or a city manager's designee to sign on behalf of the city. And then we'll be off and running again. Thanks, sir. Consider it just, uh, just a, a little bit of background. Again, Main Street, uh, New Mexico Main Street. This is Main Street America coordinating program. Everything comes down from Main Street America. This is a nationwide program. That's why it's so important. They, they select partners to participate. Main Street Roswell has been a participating and accredited institution now for what, three decades, I believe, approximately. Okay? And we want that relationship to continue. We want that relationship with Main Street New Mexico to continue. But we had some structural issues that we're addressing. And that's where we're going here. Again, consider recommending to the City Council the approval of the biannual agreement. I have extra copies of the biannual agreement, but in your packet there are, and I want to draw your attention to two sections in particular that are very, very important, because I believe this is going to help us clarify roles and responsibilities moving forward, because like, like a lot of things in life, you get used to doing things a certain way, and you find yourself drifting away from your charter, drifting away from your mission. This very clearly and very succinctly lays out exactly what is expected of the city of Roswell, what's expected of Main Street Roswell, and what is expected of the New Mexico Main Street in terms of their participation in economic development, historic preservation, and downtown revitalization, all of these great and wonderful things that we desperately need. And that's why you see smiling faces and people have already executed this. We want this organization to continue we want them to flourish because if they flourish, downtown will prosper and there can't be anything better for this city than downtown to be thriving. All right. I must have gone back. You, you mean go forward? Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. There we go. All right. Something else, we must sign this agreement. Again, this is not an agreement we came up with. This is a statewide agreement. Okay. But for Main Street Roswell to be eligible to receive support from New Mexico Main Street, we have to execute this third three-party agreement. That's why there's this is more of a uh, format. What we're doing today is more of an informational session rather than a, hey, let's negotiate this. It's This is something we need to do. It's just we have to do it. Next slide. Let's try again. You're going backwards for some reason. I'm going back and for some reason. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it for you. You just said here. Okay. Anyway, for this, with respect to the MOU, okay, again, there's no direct financial obligations required by the MOU. However, it does contemplate the city will make available a minimum of $40,000. That's spelled out in the MOU. It's based on the size of the city. It's based on our anticipate, their anticipated needs. But there's also a requirement for them to do their own fundraising as well. Okay. This last year, because of some of the concerns over being able to hire an executive director at the, a rate, the city offered a uh, offered up sixty thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars of which was to be spent by Main Street Roswell in finding and hiring an executive director. They have one now, but we're into fiscal year two twenty three, so that they, they didn't spend the sixty thousand last year. They only spent the forty, okay, the original forty. So we're roll, hopefully going to roll that twenty over into this year because we have an executive director. Okay, again, the uh, review resolution 22, okay, and, and recommend uh, the city council approve the resolution. It's a declaration of support for Main Street Roswell. Also, what is on my desk is, is uh, Barbara and I put together a resolution of support. We took that resolution that you have in front of you, we flipped the words, so that it's a resolution of support, Main Street Roswell pledging their support to work with the city of Roswell as well. They've already executed theirs. I have it on my desk, West Signatures, ready to go. So with respect to this agreement and with respect to moving forward with uh, Main Street Roswell, staff would uh, respectfully request that you uh, authorize the signature and authorize the uh, city council to uh, authorize either uh, the city manager or his designee to execute this agreement so that we can move forward. And next month, we can bring back the uh, professional services agreement. Once we do that, we're on board for fiscal year 23, and we are rolling. And just to be clear, we we're at, we broke it up, and there's actually two separate actions here. One is to approve a resolution of support, and the other is to approve the MOU. They're really two separate actions. Right. 
Okay. The first one is just the, the first one is MOU. The first one is the MOU, and then the MOU says you have to have a resolution of support. So then the next one is you know, the resolution. Sorry. So yeah, two separate two separate actions. Recommend approval of the MOU to the, uh, and then recommend uh, the authorization of the signature on the resolution to the city council. Yep. Anybody have any questions? Ms. Gomez, I would ask, I assume that you all have had an opportunity to understand this document that you're yes. all in agreement. Yes, we have. Actually, we've been reviewing it for quite a while. Kevin brought it to the last board meeting. So we have had it for a little bit, been able to review it. And he specifically pointed out areas that we're responsible for, what the city is responsible for. So we're making sure that we meet every item that's required by us, which by the way is on section two requirements of local mainstream organization APO. Yeah, there's quite an extensive list of things that you want to do. List. Um, so yeah. I'm working with Mexico Main Street to make sure that we're in line with what they want. And also following up with Kevin on everything that we work on to make sure we're all the same. Mr. Mayor, just like I asked the other organizations that have come before us, are they in compliance with the same? They are. Thank you. In fact, in fact, if I could just add one more thing, I am so pleased with the direction this organization is going right now, and so pleased that they are leaving behind many of the concerns. I mean, we're going to leave the past in the past. We're moving forward in a very positive fashion. In the past, well, even before you were executive director, yes. you and yes. Cynthia went to the national convention. So they got a much bigger picture of what the roles and responsibilities of mainstream were. And you personally just got back from executive director training, yes. okay, which I was able to follow on Zoom when I could. So I even got a little bit of it. So we are very much the, the era of miscommunication, misinformation. I'm not gonna say it's completely over, but we are working hard to make sure it certainly never occurs again. And then the last thing I want to, and this is a preview of coming attractions that I've been allowed to say, okay? We are anticipating not just good news, but very, very good news about a project that Main Street Roswell and the city have been working on for the last two and a half years. Awesome. awesome. Can't give you the details yet, but it's imminent, imminent. Okay. Okay. Councilor Preston. <laughs> Barbara, just, just out of curiosity for my own self, how far at Main Street do you guys? Do? Well, well there, is, there is a corridor of Main Street, which actually Kevin and I are working to expand that corridor. But what has been approved right now starts over there on 8th Street, correct me if I'm wrong, but starts on 8th Street all the way down to Alameda Street, going on north and south and going east and west on Richardson and Virginia. It does include some of the historical district of the railroad district only because it is a historical railroad district. And so we're hoping to expand it to include the railroad district and also to include the historical district, which that brings us a huge pocket of money from a different, you know, different location, the historical money that we can get. And part of that is going to be the uh, grant that I just worked on before I got hired. The week before I got hired, I worked on the grant with uh, the staff and with Miley. Uh, on getting us a grant to finish or to at least start the construction of the, uh, what do they call that, the market, the railroad market mm -hmm. walk. Market walk. That will be south hard. on 2nd Street. Right. So that's the uh, that's the grant that I just worked on. Kevin's kind of alluding to, but once all of this is done, then we, they will let us know whether we got the money. I was kind of told a little bit by the Main Street that we have been approved awaiting the signature of this, and then they will let us know how much money was awarded. We were able to ask for as much as 1.6 million towards that project. So I'm hoping that we will get that whole amount, but we won't know because this is contingent on this. But I was always curious when they talk about Main Street, what, what did it encompass? Right. Yeah, and like I said, Kevin and I are gonna be working on trying to expand that based on the master plan for the city of Roswell and the master plan for Main Street, because there's both of those in the master plan. One of the reasons I'm so proud and happy to present this to you all this, this month and next month is that, you know, we can only move forward. We cannot correct the wrongs of the past. I mean, we can correct the wrongs of the past, but we need to move forward cooperatively. And even before I started working with, with uh, Barbara, what I noticed was that the, the 
Main Street Roswell Master Plan, which was done back in 2011. And it does identify a Main Street district. That is not reflected in our 2016 comprehensive plan. The MRA, which is also an area where Main Street Roswell can be effective, is not reflected in our comprehensive plan as well. The historic district, I went back and even though that is reflected in our, and historic preservation is also part of Main Street Roswell's charter, the historic preservation plan, which went before council in 1999, was never adopted. So we've got, this year is going to be a groundwork year. We are going to be correcting some things, moving forward with planning and everything else. Barbara and I have already talked about it. There is money available for planning grants. But what we hope to do is to take all these separate districts, put them under a single metropolitan re MRA that will be the downtown business district, but will include the railroad district, the downtown district, and the historic preservation. That will open up different varieties of funding, different varieties of opportunities, different varieties of grants. In fact, I'm kind of surprised Mark Bleth isn't here. Of course, he just bought the, the old uh, the White House. He's converting that over. We, he brought it to my attention that we had the historic preservation document that was never adopted. He's got this beautiful old historic home that he's repurposing right now. It's absolutely gorgeous, but what about everything around him? Okay. We don't have any controls in place. So we're doing a, this year, fiscal year 23 is going to be a great, we're going to be a lot of work. She's already probably spending more time with me than she'd like to, okay. <laughs> but progress is being made. We're moving forward. We're going to leave the past where it belongs and we're going to move forward aggressively and positively. Any other questions? I, I have something. Can you hear me? Sure, it's Councilor Halverson. Yes. So um, first off, I'm real proud of the work that Main Street's done over the years. They've improved the organization a lot, and we've run into a lot of problems in the past with the city, and I'm glad to see it moving forward. I do want to point out that the map of the district is on the website for Main Street Roswell, so you can see the entire map there, what's included. And the reason that uh, the Main Street Roswell Master Plan is was not included in anything is when Steve Polischek was our city manager, I personally went out to him when he was trying to develop the new master plan, and I told him, what about the master plan for Main Street Roswell? And he literally looked at me and said, that will never happen. We're not going to do anything with that, and that's why it was not included, because we tried to get that included, because we spent a lot of money for that, and it has a lot of good ideas in it, but uh, that's why that was not included. So that's okay. what I had. Thanks. Thank you, Councilor. Anyone else have any comment? That's the past. I don't care about the past. Listen, I got no rearview mirror. I got a windshield. We will not only next month when we when we come forward with the PSA. I also hope to come forward to you with a, at least a draft of a ten-year strategic plan uh, for Main Street Roswell. That's one of the things Barbara and I have talked about. Main Street Roswell has lacked a strategic plan, a true visionary plan of what, and we'll be able to come to you, to you with that. So we will have at least the framework of the path moving forward. That's awesome. I think that's great. So we can all look at that. Major success. So any other comments? Any no other comments? Do we have a motion, please? Is it my turn or your yeah, turn? Sure. My turn. <laughs> I'm keeping track. Oh, good. Come on, just one quick point. The monetary amount that's listed in this agreement doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Just yeah, the, 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 that's the purpose of the professional services agreement. And one of the reasons where we've done that, I have learned more about um, the anti-donation clause, more about how to structure these agreements to make sure that we all stay on the right side of the law, stay on the legal side of everything else. Uh, and that's why we're taking, that's another reason I wanted to separate what we're doing today from what we'll do a month from now is because I, I want to make sure you've been preaching transparency. I want to yep. make sure it's very transparent, very above board, and that everybody knows exactly what we're committing to, not just in straight dollar, but also in in-kind contribution, because yep. the document you're looking at right now does commit the city to a significant amount of, uh, well, it's a partnership. There's there's other things that we do beyond the dollars and cents. <laughs> I think that's great. We'll just keep, keep moving that way. Okay, do I have a motion, please? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Mr. Chair, I move that we recommend to school city council for approval of the biannual MOU between the city of Main Street, Roswell, and New Mexico Main Street. And does this 
Can this one go on consent? Oddly enough, I'm the one that asked. No, you. it's because there is money attached to it, and I, I wanted to send it to everything relative to Main Street Roswell will be just like our other partners. It will go to legal for the contract, finance because there is money involved, but and then ultimately the city council. This one here has no money. You said. Well, there's no, there's a commitment though. Um, ben, that's if you look on keeping it, there is a commitment. So we need to send this to finance. Yeah, I'm sending this to finance. It's already on the agenda. I hoped you'd move forward. It's already on the agenda. I hope you out. I don't thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay. I have a motion and do I have a second on that motion? Second. Any other comments? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. There being none, motion so passes. Now we're on to item number four, which is a resolution for the biennial de declaration of support and collaboration with Main Street Roswell. Mr. Neighbors, I guess you get the floor again. Do you no, actually, we've covered everything we need to cover it's, 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 at this point. At this point, the, like I said, the uh, the Main Street Roswell has already signed their version of it. Okay. The uh, the uh, and it's in. I've got copies of it the available. Wet signed copies. Barbara just. No problem. They've already signed the MOU. They're just waiting on us. Okay. So, Any other comment? Well, Parker, this is your last meeting with us. I'd like to hear a few comments from you. <laughs> I'm trying to stay out of trouble. <laughs> okay, there'd be no further comments. May I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to consider recommending approval to full council of proposed resolution 22-XX in support of Main Street Roswell be added to the consent agenda. That can go to the consent. Um, it's a, it's a, the reason I thought about that was because it's support. Actually, it's going to move forward to finance. Why don't when we get to finance, we'll make that determination about whether it's consent or not. Can go on, just as a general matter, can go on consent. The only danger there is that uh, it, a resolution, as you know, takes six votes. If, and because of the way that, I guess if you separate out the consent agenda from the regular agenda, it's okay. But if, if something were to, if the consent agenda were to be adopted by less than six votes, any resolutions that were part of that consent agenda arguably would fail. Okay. So that's the only danger with putting resolutions on the consent agenda. Okay, so very good. Um, so to be at, uh, to sent to full council. Okay. Okay, second. There being a motion for resolution 22XX for the declaration of support of the collaboration on Main Street Roswell. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same, there being no opposition, so motion passes. Next, we have on the agenda, Mead and Hunt Air Service Development Consulting Services. I think that is you, Mr. Stark, it is not, please. Hello. Okay, so uh, this is a renewal of the Mead and Hunt contract for air service. Um, Develop, uh, route service development. And so just the history of it, we approved it in August of, uh, I'm sorry, July of, uh, well, let me go back. Anyway, last year in 21, I thought I had the data. Yeah, there it is, July 28, uh, April 21. And we've gone a year with the contract and it's the first of three renewals. Um, the expenses of this would be uh, 66,625. Um, so for city, uh, policy, we've got to get approval to go over 60,000. I think I have one more slide, is that correct? So the Airport Advisory Committee recommended by the nothing at its July 28th meeting um, with the condition that the city receives a grant um, from the state for air service development. I have that in my hand, it happened Tuesday. It's not signed yet, but we did get the 400,000 grant with a 50% matching and that grant is for both uh, the marketing side of the house and for the um, consultant side of the house. So I don't, don't want to go too deep into the weeds. Jeff Hartz is online listening as well. If we need any questions with him, we need not. But, but basically the discussion about the need for this at this particular time is that as everybody knows, the airlines are in a stressed time and we're probably not going to get something this year, maybe in the next year in terms of new routes. We're not going to get our Denver route because because of the stress that United's under. It's all about crews; they don't have them. But 
the the issue here if we if we don't renew the contract and we bow out and and we don't participate in in the um, in the program basically of talking to the airlines and staying in touch and keeping them aware of, of what Roswell is and what our needs are and what the air service demand is there and what future demands are then we are taking taking a step out of line basically at that point we'll put ourselves back a year or two at least of whatever whatever time we're out of it. maybe further. Um, Jeff, I don't know if you can speak or not, um, but you, can you hear me? You may not be able to hear him. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, but but the idea is that is that if we take a step out of line, we lose our place and we can pitch back further on anything else. The things that we'll would be looking at this year would be um, probably about three um, headquarters visits, maybe virtual, maybe actually in person uh, with airlines that, that we might be able to get routes to Las Vegas. Um, and there's still a possibility of, of an alternate way of getting to Denver, which isn't working out. It hasn't worked itself out yet to be the opportunity, but Jeff, I'll let, give the floor to you for just a second if you want to say anything. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. And, and as Scott mentioned, um, the way we're looking at this next year is things are starting to get back to normal on the airline uh, air service development front. Um, airlines are starting to take headquarter meetings again. They're starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel for next year or the year after for growth again. Um, for the legacy carriers, the low to low cost carriers are still like allegiance of the world, are still looking for um, opportunities. And we're finally able to get back out there. Obviously, we're able to navigate the, the COVID storm that happened in the industry that left a lot of airports without service. And so we've been able to do that. We've come out of the back end of it, um, having our Dallas service, having our Phoenix service intact. And now this next year, it's really continuing those conversations um, with prospective new airlines so that we can keep front of mind for them as they make decisions here over the next couple of years for new opportunities. Okay. Stand for questions. My question, yeah, the grant, has it been approved? Uh, it has not been signed yet, but, but yeah, I mean, we have the offer. We just have to run it through Joe's office and sign it. So we do have that in our pocket. Yeah. That's good news. I don't see Joe. I think we've already seen this before once. Yeah. And came back with the grant idea. As long as the grant is in place and then we know we're going to get those funds. Yep. So we're really going to be first. 43,000 of this will be coming back to us. So certainly know it's us. And then the rest of the two is whatever we spend on marketing, we'll use the reverse half of that as well. So that we're right. getting both for the grant. And we don't, how long do we have to use that money? I think it's two to three years. So we can okay. test it out there. And, and honestly, they say they have been really good with extensions. If we get to the end of our term, as long as we let them know, they'll extend us another year. Just, I know we know what happens. We have this fly Roswell. Uh, those monies be used for that fly Roswell advertisement stuff that we use. Sure. Okay, so that we can just help support that that's yeah. coming out of the pocket right now. Yeah, the billboard you see out there, the digital yeah. stuff on the internet, radio ads, whatever we choose to do for marketing, it can be used for all that. Okay. The 50% you know, match, that is coming from where? The state. The state. The, the, not, not, the not Roswell Aviation Division. Okay. Okay. The match is coming from Roswell. So 50% for state money. So we have to so we have to spend 100% and the state will reimburse us half. Yeah. So Roswell will be up have to put up 200,000. Yes. And they'll give us back 200,000. So Roswell has to put up 400 they'll give us back too. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, but I'm saying that <laughs> at the end of the day Roswell At the end of the day 200,000 is spent by Roswell. Yes, and 200,000 is spent by the state. I, I do the same thing. I go back and forth. Yeah. Which part of that, just so you know, we're spending it, but now we can use these billboards that we're paying 100% for. Exactly. We now can put those under this program and, and get reimbursed for that as well. Yeah. And, and these dollars are already budgeted, so we're getting half of that. Okay. Yeah. That answer your question. Yeah. Any other questions, concerns? Oh, yeah. Your turn. My turn. Mr. Chair, I, I move that we uh, recommend authorization to renew the air service development consultant space. 
contract to meet in time. Uh, expenditure of 66,625. Does the motion have to include the uh, fact of the uh, grant being uh, received at 400,000? I think that might be a, a, a Parker question, but I would say since it's up to you guys, I mean, the, the, the AAC did recommend it that way, but you don't have to accept the recommendation. It's however you want to do that. But is that a yeah, good answer? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is what they did down yep. on item or board or here. Okay. Yeah, to, to include the $400,000 grant with a 50,000, I mean, 50% uh, match. Second. Are you done? I'm sorry. Yeah. A second. I had a motion and a second. Any further discussion? It's just just one yes. question for clarification. Is this one also on legal? Or to finance. 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 We are illegal. I had not put it on finance, no. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying because of the uh, amount of money. Well, it's a budgeted item already, is it not? Yes. Okay. It's already in the budget. Okay. So okay. it's not outside the scope of the budget. So. I want to send it to finance. That's fine. I'm fine with that. My opinion is, if if things come before and they're in the budget and are accounted for in the budget, let them go. Okay. So, all those in favor, by signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. There being none, some motion passes. Now we move on to item six, which is phase group phases two and three. For research and generation of the airport security master plan. Okay. So start again, please. Sure. Thank you. So phase one, if you guys remember, it went through finance the first time because we were on a time schedule needed to get it pushed through. But because this is a contract, that's the reason I'm bringing it back to legal again. That's the appropriate place for it. So phase one was approved uh, by city council in May of, of 22. The reason we did not run phase two and three through is because we had a proposal but we weren't 100 percent sure that proposal was going to look like that when we got to the time to do it we were right about that it did change a bit we changed the scope around a little bit the price went up a little because we had to expand the scope um, but phase two would focus on uh, documenting airport security including staffing training policies procedures security systems uh, associated support infrastructure. Basically, it's everything that has to do with security at the airport. It's a holistic approach to the to the whole uh, program that would develop a master plan for how we move forward into the future. The idea is not only the ASP corrects things that need to be corrected now and produces a new uh, airport security program. The next step is to look what it looks like as we move forward and how we keep it sustainable. Phase three, that scope of work, um, is for um, going through and any physical uh, electronics uh, controls those type of things that we find that we need that we don't have we're going to identify those we're going to go out to rp and get and get those things um, working and installed that could change again honestly i wanted to bring these two to you now so we probably don't have to come back again there is certainly a possibility once we get the master plan done that phase three could change a bit too. We hope not, but the intention is to is to get both of them approved and continue moving on. So you can see what the fees are: ninety-eight thousand four ninety-one for phase two, sixty-four thousand uh, six twenty-eight for phase three for about one hundred sixty-two thousand total. Yeah, which is not in the budget. That is not in the budget. That is correct. Phase three is not. Phase two is. Phase two is not in the budget. No, neither one of these items are in the budget. You could make a motion to to refer to the finance. Yeah, I think that's my likelihood to do that because I'm concerned with what your reserves are. Absolutely. Because okay. we got another item coming up here, and as you recall, when we got presented last council meeting, there was only going to be five hundred thousand dollars in projected reserves at the airport fund. Here's 150,000. So now we're down to 350. The next item on your agenda is going to consume that rest of that. So it concerns me that this needs to be moved, in my opinion, counselors, to the Finance Committee for further review. 
I, w I will note that uh, this is part of our ongoing discussions with TSA over security, and so it is a priority item. But it is a priority item. We got to make sure we got to find a way to 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 make sure that it's just paid. And I wanted to mention as well that that I do have a grant that I've had actually three of them that I've had for a while from uh, from FAA that we've been using to uh, get reimbursement on operational expenses. This expense would be eligible for reimbursement under that grant. And how much would that reimbursement be? Uh, it'd be 100 percent. 100 percent reimbursement. So right now I've got the three grants. I, the two of them have just a little bit left on them. Twenty six thousand on the CARES grant. Uh, 49,000 on the CRSSA grant, but I have 1.173 um, million on the last one, which we barely touched at this point. So it's open, that grant? All three of them are open. So we could we so pay. We have the capacity for We have the capacity. We have to up front, but we do have the capacity for To get reimbursement from those grants. Well, that's new news. So whether you want to send it to finance or not, because now knowing you've got the capacity for reimbursement. I'd like to make a suggestion. When you send it to finance, make sure that those are tagged so Mr. Corn knows oh, yeah. that we're not hitting his pocketbook and hurting his well we just found out something new today that we well, yeah, right. and I don't know why can you can you not go ahead and pass this on without going to finance since you know you have this money and this is a TSA I'm ready to finance I'm okay to move this to council. And, exactly. and not go to because now we just, we just got a new data point we Correct. didn't have prior to yeah. seeing this. This, to so. is, this is the TSA very Oh, it's a super important apply. Now you got it. So I'd like to make a suggestion that goes no. straight to council without stopping the finance. I don't I don't have a problem with that because like I say, and I think when you make your presentation to council that you put in there that you do have a reimbursable capacity for this. Mm -hmm. So that we are all aware of that. So thank you for listening to me. Because I understand we do have to make pay attention to TSA and what's going on. And so they hold the lock and key at this point. Okay. It's my turn. It's your turn. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to consider approval of contracting the research and generation of airport security master plan phase two and systems upgrade implementation phase. Three, two, full council. Can I ask you to just add one more item? That yeah. those items will be re reimbursed, like uh, grant monies. Can I struggle? Yeah. Mr. Chair, I'd like to move uh, to. Well, you can just add that at the end. No, but it, then it confuses me. I have okay. to start. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to keep starting over. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I'd like to. Um, move to consider approval of contracting the research and generation of an airport security master plan phase two and systems upgrade implementation phase three with consideration to funding or for Reim a grant reimb money for grant re reimbursement. Consideration to grant reimbursement to full council. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other? Conversation, dialogue, input. There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same. There being no opposition, motion so passes. Item number seven, which is the Honeywell International Fire Alarm. Mr. Christopher, you lucky guy, you. Yeah. So um, this this proposal is for the fire alarm systems for the Idea building. Uh, what this is going to—it's a uh, What it's for is to upgrade, uh, to essentially make the building federally compliant, which will bring us up to the city requirements as well. Um, what we've done with this is we've looped everything. So there were some controls, some sprinkler heads that need to be replaced. So what we've done is combine that with a replacement of the fire panel, and that'll be the 166400. Like, like I said again, I mean this is this is one of the things where, like I said, the new information coming out that we're the monies we're going to fall short on all operation costs will be made up with the current monies. So if you look at the uh, return on investment sheet that we've made for you, is that um, when all of our expenses out, we're looking at a uh, return on investment less than three years. So, Mr. Heldbrand. Yeah, it's not in there. That's all. I'm sorry. Yes, it is. Okay. 
And essentially, we have to upgrade the fire system where we're not going to be in compliance. Right. Did you want to go ahead and present on the air unit or wait do one at a time? Or? Let's get them both. I mean, they're, okay. I don't have any reason why we can't combine so these on two. On the HVAC unit, uh, we're looking at uh, 55 or 5,500. 554,800. Now, what this does is replace the chiller units and it goes and establishes all the controls. Uh, they're currently, the building doesn't have zoning, so we're going to go ahead and put zoning in because that'll reduce our energy costs when the classes aren't going. Uh, we're also putting in the safety gear. Instead of replacing our boiler systems or mechanical walls, we're just going to put alarm sensors in. Oh. If they detect carbon monoxide, they'll shut the system down. And we have to have some other federal requirements for the diplomatic security. So that, that's what the, the cost is. And, it, and again, it was over, it's just with the way the market and supply chains are, we just, we under, we over, we, over, we underestimated what the quote was going to be. So, but again, like I said, is we're, we're looking at this to uh, return on investments less than three years. And I'll stand for questions on both. Let me ask you one. Uh... Well, I'm gonna we're gonna send this to finance. This has got to go to finance. Okay. In my opinion, because this is a large sum of money. And when we first looked at this, when the lease was given to us to approve, the estimate for these repairs was close to what the lease payment was within fifty thousand dollars. Now we're looking at Three hundred thousand dollars in additional costs. Whoa. Uh, you want both items to go to finance? Yeah, that's where I believe it should go, okay. and for further discussion, because somewhere, Mr. Crippler is going to go out and see if he can find a magic wand and get some reimbursement funds from somebody. We're going to use the money to figure out how work. <laughs> no. <laughs> If you're going to have that argument, you didn't have much care for that. Let me be clear the, the money on those three grants cannot be used for capital improvements. Right. So the HVAC and that stuff it can't be, but the janitorial, which comes the next, is yeah. reimbursed. Janitorial could the be. Janitorial could be reimbursed. So we could get. Well, I haven't presented the janitorial. Yeah. I know that's the last item on the agenda. That's 70, 72 grand. Yeah. So. Uh, we're still in, we're down now to a uh, $225,000 right. gap. And your CARES money is how much? $50,000. Yeah, well, so. how much is the other? Well, we have $1.2 million altogether between the three. Yeah. But you can't touch that. No, we can't touch it with, with this. Yeah. What we can do is, is, and again, it takes a little magic, but operational expenses that we can reimburse that goes into the reserve might be able to come back to this. But then again, you're talking about a financial decision. Yeah. That's up. Okay. Everybody fully understand mm -hmm. that shuffle that just took place there. Mm -hmm. So, do you want a motion to include both items to go to uh, to finance, or do you want to? Uh, well, I think you can look at them both hand in hand. But it, and let me just take. I think you can take them and combine them. There's no reason why they can't be combined. Mm -hmm. right? Your bids are, it's all Honeywell. It's nobody different. It's all okay. you know, so we can well, You have two different documents, though, you're, that you're. Oh, we did? Contracts. You better do it. Contracts that are in the packet. I would suggest, formally speaking, you should do them separately. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're just trying to make things streamlined. I know it. <laughs> you're just That's you down. It's out of that ditch, so. <laughs> okay. I guess it's your turn again, then. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So. Item seven. Mr. Chair, I uh, I move that we recommend to send to uh, finance committee uh, the uh, authorizing Honeywell International GSA contractor to repair and upgrade the fire alarm system in building 500 located at 47 Gale Harris Street for an amount of 166,400. I have a second. I'll second. I have a motion and a second to move item number seven, which is the Honeywell International Firearm to the Finance Committee for approval. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same, there being no opposition. Motion so passes. Item number eight, which Mr. Christopher has already discussed to us, or discussed and explained the costs associated with it. So if I can have a, a motion on item number eight, please. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to consider recommending authorizing Honeywell International GSA contractor to repair and upgrade the HVAC system in building 500 located at 47 Gale Harris Street uh, to send to finance. That would be fine in the amount of $554,000 plus GRT. Or... Yeah. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same. There being no opposition, now we have number nine. Mr. Christopher, you have another item to talk to us about. Yes, this one might have to be very politically correct. So this is for the Geneva's Cleaning Service uh, for the Alia building. Uh, the reason that uh, we're required to do a little bit more janitorial here is due to certain classes that, that are taught and they bring in national, the, the nationals, uh, required more uh, on staff janitorial. Right? And that's just to keep up with the health code and everything else. So uh, Geneva's Cleaning Services, which is on the city RFP, or uh, yeah, whatever the thing is, um, put in a quote for 72,735.30, that includes all cleaning services for the, uh, for the, where I live. Uh, that one as two is, is that's the one that we can use the grant, like I said, as we're looking at. So <clears throat> on that is when we get up, after we replace the units in the fire system, uh, the janitorial and groundkeeping more than cover the cost of the operations of the building. But we're just gonna have to get over that hump for that first two, two point seven nine years. What did they, when we looked at the lease, what did you thought? Was this number about the same as what you originally thought it would be? No, this is less. This is like, like 96. 96 yeah. yeah, we projected 96. Uh, right. So you got one going the right way. All right. Yeah, that's good. So, and, and there will be no add on cost by this cleaning service. They will come in and go. And this will fulfill the requirement yes. that the State Department. We, we double verify it. Yeah. This will so, meet all their demands. So the contractor knows that that's, yes. and don't come back later saying, I need some more money. Right. So, yeah. okay. Any further discussion, any questions? You, uh, you don't mind. Exhibit C, page 168, that's the cost proposal form for compensation. It says offers must complete the following form. This form and any other documents submitted which pertain to any other cost pricing must not be included within the technical proposal. So my question is like the square footage for carpet shampooing, square footage for policing and, and stripping, which in the exhibit uh, shows or in their proposal uh, in their quote shows quarterly. Is that an additional charge? No, uh, we we had her we had her do everything. We she was given the the couple of the uh, copies of what the requirements were, and she did on that, including the wall, the wall sanitation, and all that. I mean, she she had to go through all those. Okay, just counselor, just one item. It says the thing was dated eight nine of twenty one. I don't know whether this yeah, is just in. Next. Yeah, is that just in here for informational purposes? So the reason why this is in here is that uh, this is the contract under which we are using to procure the services. So when we, what we did was, uh, like we'll do with a lot of them, when we have somebody who's providing a lot of different service for citywide, we'll do one RFP for citywide service to a contract with them. And then any particular department that wants to use that contractor has an agreement already in place. They don't have to go to procurement. And so this agreement is from 2021, but it's for the whole city to do any kind of janitorial work that we want. And it doesn't have to do new procurement. Under the scope of, that Under the scope of this one. Yeah, that's why that's. The way it is. My only other thing that, that I have is I, I just want to make sure as, I, as we were going through that there's so much that's being required from federal government for the maintaining of this. I just don't want to get in a situation of missing something. Um, the, what what in their quote is placed in there 
Um, if we have a situation where some of those things she may not have accounted for, how do we handle some of that later? But, or, or is it already signed for through the contract and the scope of work? It's already signed. I mean, it's already when we signed with the uh, with Ilea, that that was the terms on it. So there's the correction clause. So if there there was an incident or if something didn't get done, they have to notify us, and we have 30 days to correct. Okay. The only other thing is just a, something needs to be corrected uh, on page 159 under Exhibit A, the scope of work. Um, it says under number title needs to be changed. Number two under statement of work, and then we're number two again the R for That should be attachment B, uh, not attachment A. That's so everything's placed under. Uh, Councilor. Uh, <laughs> That is a mistake that's going to go all the way back to the original RFP. Oh, really? Uh, I don't, you know, it's, it's already out there. You could fix it here, but it wouldn't fix the RFP itself. No, no problem. Right. Well, to clarify, where everybody understands where it's from. And that's, there's probably stuff in that the state RFP does not require in the federal part. Yeah, just some of that as well. That's true. Okay. Any further comments? Would it be any counselor? Great for a motion. Yeah, I assume there's no further discussion. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, I, I move that we re <clears throat> I'm sorry, we recommend authorizing expenditure of $72,735.30 for Geneva Cleaning Service to provide services in building uh, 500 located at 47 North Street. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. There being none, motion still passes. Item number 10 is a presentation by Mr. Kuhn, the alien dragon. Before we begin this one, let me just say that uh, normally it's not in order to amend the agenda to add a new item. Okay. However, I, I, uh, this is really part of public participation. So we can move it to the agenda. Yeah. I would just advise that uh, to the extent you want to discuss or take action, that should be on a future agenda. Gotcha. So, that's got no so let's move this to public. We can take it off the agenda. Well, it's, it's really, I mean, it's public participation. Right. So I mean, you can call it, you can right. specifically mention it, right. but that's what it is. So, Robbie, can I just hold you for one yes, sir. quick second? Because I would, we got departmental reports. I'll just follow the order here if you don't okay. mind. And. We, the report from the city clerk is attached. Any other comments that you would like to make about your report? No. Any questions of the city clerk? There being none. Human resources. He's gone. Hmm. Okay, so there will be no report. It's attached. Okay, unless you want to give it. Any questions? Okay. Uh, Air Center report report is attached. I see you've got a nice little income stream taking place out there that you reported. Is that for the single month? Yes, that's a single month. I don't think everybody's, everybody's read their their income stream. He didn't tell us about expenses, but he told us about his income. Yeah. So, do you have anything else you wish to report on your report from the airport? Um, probably just on the ascent project. It, it's actually turning dirt. We've already run into, run into one little hiccup that we resolved today. It didn't cause us any problems, so it's it's happening. Okay. Other than that, I think uh, there's really any a lot of new news at the moment. Okay. Anyone have any questions of Mr. Stark? You know, Mr. Patterson, this is your last legal committee with us, so I'm going to have you do a full-blown legal committee report. Oh gosh, I'll see you. <laughs> now, if everyone has read this report, I assume everyone, I'm not trying to cut you short, and because I know you all put effort into your reports to the council, and I think they're very important that people pay attention to them. But if you don't have any questions of Mr. Patterson, I just want to say in the four short months or four meetings that we've had, that I have thoroughly had a great pleasure of working with you and find you to be a very high level professional. Uh, forget about the attorney side, but talk about your professionalism is absolutely outstanding. And I wanna thank you and commend you for your service that you have provided to this city. 
and you will be dearly missed. I know I have enjoyed working with you uh, and that uh, you've kept me out of the ditch <clears throat> a couple times. And so, uh, again, I want to wish you well in your new endeavor. Um, and I guess, do we need to buy you a parting gift of a warm winter coat? <laughs> Probably going to need one. Yeah. And proper footwear, but again, Parker, I want to thank you for your service that you've done to this city. So, anyone else have anything they wish to say there, Councilor? I've I've been in his office quite a bit. He knows that I'm not looking forward to him not being there. Either, so, but uh, I'll get to see him more than that looks. I go to Juno once again. Oh, you do. So. Uh, Okay. Well, thank you, Councillor, and it's it's been a privilege, and it's been really fun to be this liaison to the legal committee. I'll just say it's been it's been a pleasure. Well, thank you, <laughs> Councillor Best. Do you have any further you'd like to say? Prayers. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's what I hear. <laughs> I'll eat your wild ray. You learn how to fish. <laughs> that's for damn sure. So, okay. I have no other comments or reports or announcements. And now, Mr. Kuhn, if you would, please. Thank you. My own, I'm going to have to refer to my phone here in a minute. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Vice Chairman, Mr. Presa, thank you for the opportunity to come in front of you today on something that's very dear to my heart. This is my partner, George Stevenson. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about the 80th City Dragway. Uh, in 1996, Rick Calloway was in front of the City Council and they overwhelmingly approved the building of the uh, back then Russell Dragway. Uh, before that, the Dragway had been out of the old airport. Of course, that's all history. I was one of the original members of the Roswell Dragway. Roswell's Boys Club Dragway out there. And it's been a passion of mine for many, many, many years of drag racing. It's not a cheap sport, but it's a fun sport. Uh, in 1997 or 96, Rick Calloway started this track out here. He ran it for a long time. Uh, he ended up getting out of the business it has passed hands three or four times. The the guy that we got it from uh, was a, a businessman here. Uh, he had very ill feelings about some stuff. Um, it had sat for a couple of years. Uh, I was the sheriff at the time. We noticed the drag racing of our kids was going up. Between here and Artesia, they would 15, 20 of them would go out there and get up the side of the road, and then they'd pull over and drag race, and then pull over, and they did that to and from Artesia a lot. And we were catching a lot of young kids drag racing. We were very fortunate. Nobody ever got killed in one of them. I saw the need to get this track back open. It was then leased, that property Mystic had the lease on. We subleased from Mystic. Uh, Glenn Wells is the one that leased it to us. Uh, we were a shoestring budget and there was nothing out there but weeds and broken glass. Uh, we formed a committee. Well, we, we had a meeting at the Oaks Lodge one night, 200 guys showed up and women because we they were interested in getting this thing going in. Uh, we formed a committee of six uh, and we picked guys that were racers but they also contractors. They had heavy equipment. They knew about IT. They knew about PA systems. So we, we took this board of six and, and started the uh, Alien City Dragway. We wanted an Alien City Dragway so it would stand out. Anybody that knows Alien, they're gonna associate with Roswell, New Mexico. And worldwide known Alien City Dragway is in Roswell, New Mexico. Anyway, we, we got it started. Our very first night, we opened. We had cars lined up, and if you're not familiar with where that track's at, it's on the May, uh, way out there by the, uh, where they scrapped a bunch of the airplanes. We had cars lined up all the way to Southeast Maine, or on the 285. 
It took you two hours to get on the track that night. We couldn't believe it. It was such a success. It stayed that way for quite a while, and then things started dying down. We uh, we held a lot of special events out there. We had we've been on national TV, I think three times. Uh, if you're not familiar with JJ the Boss, he's a big time racer on the Discovery Channel. He's been out here twice. Uh, the first time we had him there for two days, we had 8,500 people show up. Man, you talk about bringing in motel rooms and gas stations and restaurants. We filled this town up, kind of our little mini Gus Macker weekend. We had lots of people out there. We've had so many special events. When Rick had it, we did a Lindsey Callaway Memorial Race. You had to, because Lindsey was, had worked out there. She died of leukemia. Rick and his wife, Tracy, got into bring a toy. He got in free. And we filled up U-Haul trailers full of toys to go to Lubbock to uh, go to the children's hospital there, the cancer ward where, where Lindsay had died. Uh, right now we're in the process. This is our about third or fourth time to do this. Truckers for Tots. Saturday night, we're having a race uh, for... It's basically a, a valley race, Dexter Hegerman Lake Arthur, if they can get out of the water. Uh, we have tractor trailer trucks going to race down our, our strip. People love it. Uh, we bring in lots of people. Uh, and then the next night, we're going to have, well, that's the night we're going to have a regular race, but we have these usually about 12, 15 big trucks race. Uh, they're all glittered up and they got lights on and honking their horns. It's a good night. We entertain a lot of people throughout here. When we put on a big race, we get people from Texas, Oklahoma, Arizona, New Mexico, West Texas, especially. We compete with four other tracks in this state. Us, Hobbs, uh, Albuquerque, and one in Deming called Arroyo Seco. Uh, we are by far the premier track of all of those. We were rocking along last year. Uh, always had good attendance. And of course, COVID hit us two years ago. When we, when we were at with Mystic, they just made us pay rent the weeks, the week, the, the months we raced, which is usually seven months. When the track set dormant out there, we didn't pay them any rent. We raced probably four to six nights a week out. And we paid them, I mean a month. We paid them uh, 500 bucks, a little over that. Uh, they got tired of messing with us, so we turned it back to the city. The city went ahead and kept it at under $600 a month. But again, we're only doing that five, maybe five six times a month racing. Uh, We've done all the maintenance out there. We had a bump in our track. We poured 100 foot of cement by two lanes, 30 foot ourselves. We smoothed that track out just as smooth as could be out of our pockets. Gnarly. We built buildings out there. The guy that had the track before us took a chainsaw to our bleachers, our wooden bleachers. Just cut them in pieces. We bought new bleachers. Uh, we had to have a timing system. Our timing system cost us 50 grand. We can't even start without a timing system. We went and borrowed the money for the 50 grand, put in the big scoreboards, everything worked out great, got the, the loan paid off. Uh, we're rocking along and, and we hadn't, we thought, well, we better check with the city and find out what our new lease is going to be. Well, we went out to the, the airport and talked to Mr. Christopher. It was about six or seven of us. And he informed us our rent had gone up to, uh, I think, $48,000 a month on fair market, market value. <laughs> what? $548,000? Well, that's fair market value. A square foot on a drag strip plus all the other buildings. There's two old Quonset huts that are out there. They have no electricity. They've sit there for years. Uh, when Mystic let us have it, uh, well, Mystic kept those, but when, when the city let us take over the track, or 
They said, go ahead and use those, those buildings. Well, then we found out they were $4,500 a month a piece, a month to have those buildings out there. We keep nothing in them but a few, some paint and a few of our lawnmowers and stuff like that what we keep out there. Well, we were just flabbergasted at this enormous amount of money. Hobbs pays $1 a month to the city for their track. It's an abandoned airstrip. Albuquerque pays $1,000. Albuquerque is a metro. They've got the racers to support if they could do a thousand dollars. We were told that the FAA was making the city do this. The fair market value. You know, we're not even inside the fence, basically, of the airport. We're on the outside, southeast side of the airport. Uh, we were told that Avex wanted that runway for their drones. Well, I went to talk to Avex. Robert Ivey said, my drones are too big for that racetrack, don't need it. But we were told that they were gonna build a big hangar on the other end of the racetrack down there, and they wanted that track for access to and from and to put utilities in. I talked to Mayor Jennings. He said, never heard of that. I don't know what you're talking about. He supports us. Bobby Corn, I go to church with you. This comes up pretty regular. I plug the crap out of this. And he said, I support you on it. We have what's killing us right now. We don't know what tomorrow's holds. We were told January 2023, next month or next year, to have everything off that track. We've got concrete barriers this high. A quarter mile on both sides, that's a half a mile of solid barriers. We've got our timing uh, tower that's fixed. We've got a concession stand that's a metal building. We got lots and lots of stuff out there that we could never get off. Uh, the problem is we can't tell our racers we're going to be around here next year. These guys race for what we call a gold card, a lot of them. If you win the gold card, you don't pay to race the next year. You get in free, and it's a big incentive. I mean, guys just drive harder to get that gold card. And if we don't have that gold card, if we can't tell them, hey, we're going to give you a gold card, we might not be here next year, nobody's going to support us. What we would like, and I know prices go up uh, and rent goes up, not from 546,000, you know, some more, but we've been out there 27 years. We have been a good, we pay our bills, we pay our electricity, we pay our water. If that track sits for one year, forget it. The weeds will grow up, windows will be broke, uh, stuff will be vandalized out there. Please let us keep our track. And please let us know pretty soon so we can tell our racers in our last race, probably in November, hey guys, guess what? We're gonna keep the track next year. Please come back. We send people that come here. Now, if I wanna go, if they close this track, I'm gonna to have to drive to Albuquerque, or I'm gonna to have to drive to Hobbs, or I'm gonna to have to drive to Denver. Why should I wanna get the best track in the state sitting right here? We get those guys, they come from Albuquerque and go, man, we'd much rather race here than Albuquerque, it's a better track. It's just the logistics of everything. Hobbs is eating our lunch right now. Yes, sir. Oh, again, I just, I've got a commitment I've already pretty done, but so what you're asking us to do is to re-look at your release, and I'm glad you came in, Mr. Neal, yes, that you come up with something and I don't, this all has to do with the airport, Robbie, and some of the things that FAA requirements are. We all need to understand them, but how we can, these people have put, it sounds like a lot of money into that track out there, trying to make a community event take place out there. I don't think you're out there operating for really, you're not making a problem, probably. First, first off, there's only three of us left on our board now. Right. 
Nobody has taken one red cent. Every dime that we've made out there has gone right back into that track or has been paid as price for. We have not spent, we spent a lot of money out of our pocket, but we've never been reimbursed, right. taking a paycheck or anything. Let me read you the FAA with this fair market value on Article 1713, exemptions on the self sustaining rule. It says, uh, Acceptable use include public parks and recreational facilities. Yeah. We're a recreational facility. We're better than the yeah. bowling alley, or you, we're better. You can come out for 15 bucks and stay all day long and, and watch the good race and touch the cars. You know, we're the biggest event. Uh, NHRA is the biggest sanctioned body in the United States yeah. in racing. So we're part of let me just have to tell you what, Mr. Name, will you pick this ball up and move it? Yes, sir. Um, and I will I will state, and we've been working out there on the Air Center. Uh, this is not the first uh, group or, or entity out at the Air Center that we've we've been challenged with to try to find solutions for. Right. I do know that uh, we've introduced a couple other options within there, such as uh, I'll just state a, a grazing lease. So if it's property that will not be ever developed. Right. and not utilize, we have that ability. So I'd invite, I'd invite Ron and invite you guys to come back and, and have a conversation with Jenna and we'll, we'll walk through uh, what we believe we can do. The, the, the but I would ask to, you that you- Yes, and I will, I will be involved and directly with that. that. This will come yeah. back to this committee, Robbie, so that you know yeah. we everybody is, where again, as I tell, as Kevin said, we're gonna be transparent about this whole thing. Yeah, so, the challenges with the FAA are, are kind of there. We have to treat all classifications of, of businesses the same, um, but there is there is room for those conversations. And so, GMR commitment, Robbie, that we will take. Well, again, let me reiterate. You know, we're there's not too many things you can do in Roswell for entertainment. You can go to the movies, you can go to the bowling alley, you can go to the roundy round track. And by the way, during the lockdown, we locked down, and we still paid our six hundred dollars a month. Yeah. They got eighteen citations racing wow. during the lockdown they paid out the gazoo uh fines to do that we honored the mayor i mean the governor and we locked down yeah and we still paid our 500 600 dollars a month i i, I gotta have an app adjourn this meeting pretty soon but just, just a, a better clarification for me anyway when does your your season run from what month to what month we usually start in may April, early May. April, early May to November. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting close to the end here. Okay. And we'll probably have three or four more races before we either shut it down or, or, or continue to go next next year. And I guess what I'm throwing out for as far as staff is concerned is cons considering extending maybe one, one year, two years, so we can figure it out if there's anything that we can figure out and, and work out with uh, the counselor, we have the ability for interim leases and such and everything. We'll, we'll work through that. We will get with Mr. Coon and yeah. we'll walk through that. We'll, we'll keep you informed as to the challenges and tribulations of walking through this negotiation. Okay, we're, we're racing this Friday night. And it's and then Saturday night, we're doing the toys for top, uh, to trucks for tops. I got, and I hope all of you got the the flyers and the, the tickets here's some more tickets hey, and, and they're freebies they're complimentary please come out and just see us and see what we're about see where the track's at i know some of you probably don't even know where it's at you'll have a good time enjoy yourselves thank you for your time thank you Robbie. i appreciate it and hopefully we'll get to the finish line pond <laughs> together so thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other public comment? Anyone on the line? No. Apparently not. So this meeting shall be adjourned. Parker again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.